Good afternoon, all the participants. I welcome on behalf of Department of Economics, Pragati College of Arts and Commerce, Jongiuli. I welcome today's uh, guest speaker, Dr. Kashinar Chavan, sir. Thank you. I welcome Thank you. the HOD Economics, Department of Economics, Pragati College of Arts and Commerce, Jongiuli. Dr. Avinash Shindre, sir. I welcome Professor Rupali Devadekar, madam, my colleague in Pragati College. I welcome you all the participants from various colleges and uh, from our own college on the sixth day of one week online intercollegiate lecture series. Students, participants, it is very pleasure to announce you that it's a last day. We have completed five days and this is the sixth day which is going on. For a, six, a, a complete a week, we are running this uh, lecture series. And for this lecture series, uh, we have uh, today's guest, Dr. Kashanath Chabansar. Before inviting him to uh, for the lecture, I would like to uh, request Dr. Avinash Shendris to uh, speak on this lecture. Yes. Uh, first of all, officially, I welcome to Dr. Kashinath Savan, sir, Head of the Department of Economics and Vice Principal of Arts, Commerce, Science College, Lanja. And the topic which is given to Dr. Savan, sir, that is rural diversification. Prospect and challenges. This student, uh, we are trying our best to add new things in your knowledge. And uh, all of us, we are staying in the Sharing urban the areas. And that is why we are not very much familiar uh, with the rural economy or the uh, rural areas. And uh, uh, in this budget, uh, Honorable Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi says that nearly 50% of rural population that will be transferred from rural area to urban area. It is a good initiative, but the problem is that uh, we are keeping, uh, we are, uh, our opinion are something different from Gandhian economy. Because according to Mahatma Gandhi, he says that the real India stays in rural area. So as a professor of economist, I feel that key, instead of bringing that people into urban areas, why we should not concentrate on the rural development by introducing and implementing the various uh, schemes for the uh, rural areas. So that at the simultaneously, urban and rural development will be taken place. So I hope Dr. Savan, he is also from the rural areas. His college is also in rural areas. He is associated with the rural areas. And that is why he will focus more on the rural economy, rural development, rural prospect, and what are the challenges before uh, the rural economy. So the entire aspect, it will uh, cover by Dr. Savan. So uh, I will give more time to speak him. So over to you, Dr. Gore. Thank you, sir. So uh, today we have uh, the guest speaker, Dr. Kajna Chavan, sir. And the topic which is given to sir is uh, rural economy. Uh, I introduce him uh, with his uh, few glimpses about his work. Uh, sir has completed his MA, MPhil, PhD and PGDM or diploma. And sir is working uh, presently as a head of the department of economics and vice principal. Uh, as well, IQSC NAC coordinator in new education societies, arts, commerce, 
Science College, Lanja, District Ratnagiri. Under Sir's coordination, the college uh, has got A grade in the second and third cycle of NAC accreditation. This is the great achievement under his coordination. In education, Sir has uh, 24 years of experience. About Sir's publication, he is the author of two books, editor of one book, and various research papers are published in national, international journals, as well edited books and conference proceedings. Sir is honored with the Best Teacher Award by Lanja Taluka Patrika Sangha and Sanskriti Foundation Lanja. He is a member of governing body of an NGO, Society for Environment and Biodiversity, Ratnagiri. Sir is a member of College Development Committee, member of Local Committee on uh, Mahilashram Lanja. So his work in education as well as for uh, bounding with the uh, social, we, we can understand with the uh, few glimpses of his work. So today we have uh, this great personality with us. So I welcome you, sir, on behalf of uh, Department of Economics, Pragati College of Arts and Commerce, Dombuli. And may I request you to uh, deliver the lecture on this occasion. So. Uh, sir, uh, mute up to me. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, Chandra, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm thankful to your honorable principal, ma'am. And all your colleagues, sir, from the Department of Economics. And the initiation we have taken, we have such type of lectures, which is very important, I think, from the point of view of we all people as well as our the students' community. And we may be continued with all the seven uh, colleges as a collaboration. We, we will be very interested. If we continue this initiation taken by the Sangre sir, and such type of lectures we will also organize. And this group of colleges, this cluster, cluster of these seven colleges, will continue as a collaboration and which will be helpful for our students also. So, once again, I'm thankful and uh, yes, I'm going to start with my presentation. Savan, uh, sir. Yes, sir. I uh, your volume is too low. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, might be off computer or your speaker. Please see. Yeah, yeah. So just see. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it works, sir, now? You are audible now, properly. Okay, sir. Thank you. So this is the structure of uh, my presentation. I think I should take up to... 13, uh, sir. Hello. Uh, sir, uh, you just take uh, up to 4 10 and later on there will be question answer session. Okay, sir. Thank you. So, we'll deal with the concept. I mean, the concept of uh, rural diversification, types of rural diversification, some important features of diversification when. We'll find some reasons how the diversity, why the diversification is needed, and some few examples in what way diversification is offered. Some strategies of uh, rural diversification, some important benefits, and of course, opportunities and challenges. So, to start with the diversification, we know the agriculture has vast. 
first area of our development so far as the economic development of our country is concerned the agriculture plays a very vital role so far uh, with regards to income employment then its contribution to national income and all other aspects like saving and fixed habits and it in, and in case of capital investment for the purpose of the development so diversification is very important so as to uplift the situation of the farmers their income their employment so in that way agricultural diversification refers either a change in cropping pattern which is the heart of the income of the farmers and it's a need that cropping pattern should be should be changed and the income of the income of the farmers farmer community should be increased and that way change in the cropping cropping pattern is important or the farmers opting for other non farming options like poultry farming animal husbandry etc this practice allows farmers to expand the production which helps generate a higher level of income that was that is what i was telling you the situation which is worsening uh, because of the fact that the agriculture is mostly depends on still on monsoon it depends on the various uh, low, the income is lowering due to the uh, some some hindrances are there it is irrigational it may be agricultural regarding agricultural marketing maybe because of the finance so that it is a need of the day to upgrade these aspects of the farmers so as to increase their income and the employment affect the employment situation also so that this upliftment is regards to a critical situation which you observe in the rural economy no uniform definition of rural size features urban structure social features economic features public administration etc when we concentrate on the development of a particular section how to consider the we have to consider the unique definition of a particular sector if we are applying a particular policy to a sector a uniform definition is there so that is a complex situation when we observe we observe in case of uh, the agricultural sector in case of size of the uh, size of the farming farming that is there are farmers having two or three hectares of land some farmers are more than five hectares of land some farmers are more than 15 hectares of land that type of complexity is there in case of urban structure social features are there and most important thing where i am concentrating today is economic features and which is related to agricultural sector because major of the farmers they are they, they are they are dealing with the production of agricultural produces so in case of public administration also again there is complexity of defining the rural and non farm economy so rural economy and non farm economy because it's a it's a semi type of complexity we cannot derive a particular particular uh, uh, area of uh, region where is where we can say that this is a semi urban or which is totally rural sector while defining while dealing with diversification so this type of complexity is there by sector 1 2 3 by function employment is there locational factors are there then which is the role of migration is people who are migrating from one place to another place from uh, rural to urban area where income is income gets some sort of high income they are getting in the semi urban area so that too very difficult and complex to derive whether it is mean whether it is whether it is means by means a diversification is actually takes place whether the income takes place in a proper way or double or triple we are talking about and what is the diverse whether the diversification has helps a lot to the farmers so diversification is important from the point of view of rural development because when we diversify the farm sector that will definitely 
that means we are somewhat helping a particular agricultural sector for increasing their income for increasing their employment the standard of living their livelihood that is what actually we expect from the diversification so it is essential because there is a greater risk in depending exclusively on farm for livelihood and to keep trying to provide a product to sustainable livelihood options to rural people the situation is such that they they they, uh, they don't have a particular unified a formal structure of market there may be a formal structure of feed supply to the farmers in the first lecture itself we have uh, observed the various problems of uh, the credit structure of the farmers how they are lacking the low rate of interest while they are investing for the rural economy so that's that's what actually it is necessary that productive sustainable livelihood option of the people should be provided to this type of diversification so it is it's nothing but a creation of non agricultural income to the income opportunity it's nothing but expansion of their rural non farm employment it is nothing but expansion of income of rural youths it's nothing but expansion of their standard of living so that's what it's an integral to rural development strategies and for building meaningful structural change in the rural socio economic situation we come across two types of diversification actually there is horizontal diversification and vertical diversification horizontal diversification is related to cropping or mixed crops instead of cultivating a single crop so you observe for a long period of time and nowadays as a as a system based it is not uh, uh, expanded at all to each and every farmer each and every community each and every village that's not possible actually so still we are uh, still we are we are coming across this type of farming which is traditional one it is very difficult to them also because of a small and fragmented kind of uh, land holding so this is what uh, horizontal for horizontal we should concentrate on the cropping or mixed type of crops horizontal diversification is especially useful for uh, small farmers who hold a small uh, piece of land this allows them to earn more for escalating cropping intensity so just i told you there are very few farmers who are small in uh, small they have having a small uh, point uh, small quantity of land holding and they are developing to a greater extent so it is it is necessary that we have we have to uh, such a plan should be there for the integrated integrated type of uh, integrated type of actions towards the small land holdings and that comes in the form of cropping pattern to change in the cropping pattern we have to help them to change the cropping pattern so as to come up with a fair standard of living and vertical diversification vertical di it refers to the incorporation of industrialization along with the multiple cropping in this kind of diversification farmers take a further step and invest in activities like horticulture agroforestry livestock rearing culture of aromatic plants etc and some certain combination of uh, processing units which are located to located to the are located in the rural area itself or near to the near, uh, rural location so that vertical uh, diversification in the form of processing of their foods will increase definitely the income of the uh, farming community so diversification is nothing but producing a variety of crops in the form of in the in the farm that takes two types of horizontal diversification which is related to cropping pattern and the more is vertical diversification where we we observe some industrial units which are helping for increasing the income of the farmers by way of processing things these two types of uh, diversification uh, helps the change in the cropping pattern transformation of manpower from agricultural work to other associated activities just i have mentioned poultry livestock fisheries etc 
So for rural people, diversification or focusing on associate activities is important because it gives them an opportunity to earn extra income, which is very important. So how we come across the rural diversification? What way rural diversification is major? That is actually related to these three important aspects. I am not dealing with the other social administration, etc. We are concentrating here with economic diversification and particularly which is related to agricultural diversification, which is related to again the agricultural uh, farming community. The crop diversification is important. I will measure, we measure in terms of the area, a particular area where, where the diversification has takes place. And it is observed in case of in the neighboring uh, agricultural uh, villages, which are which are very close to cities, semi-urban area. So, in that terms, crop diversification is within within the agricultural sector, and in terms of area, in terms of value of output, because value when value of output increases, that is due to the fact that whether it is due to the diversification that has takes place over a long period of time. Then farm sector diversification is there. Again, livelihood diversification includes employment diversification, whether employment of the rural community has increased, in what way it has increased, whether, uh, whether it is beneficial for them for increasing their livelihood, whether it has increased the standard of living of the farming community, whether it has increased the income or income. So increasing the income through, uh, through this diversification, that is income diversification. So I'm coming uh, here with some types of non-form employment in rural areas. Diversification takes place in these forms. Animal husbandry, it means breeding, rearing, and caring of farm animals. We observe in case of uh, uh, rural areas, also called livestock farming, breeding of uh, livestock, then meat, eggs, wool, other byproducts, source of income for farmers, provides livelihoods to over 70 million small and marginal farmers. Major source of women employment, and it provides increased stability in income, food security, transport, etc. This is what animal husbandry helps a lot. And these, these are these are existed since a long period of time. This, this type of diversification, and this is also closer to animal husbandry, that's dairy. Dairy farming is a very important uh, aspect of uh, uh, rural development. And it is nothing but the business of producing, sharing, and distribution of milk and product, you know. It includes breeding and raising of dairy animals like goat, buffalo, sheep, etc. for production of milk. The production and marketing of milk helps to rural farmers because it increases their level. Here I come across fisheries, it involves catching and selling of fish, prawns, other aquatic animals. Then it has emerged as an important source of livelihood in the states of Kerala, Maharashtra, Gujarat, and Tamil Nadu. In the belt of this Konkan belt, we observe the fishing community, the fishing community in the coastal area, and in the Ratnai district and Sindhuru district, much more dependency of Holy communities depend on the fisheries, and in support of this agricultural sector, this is an important uh, diversification that takes place in the coastal region. Around 60% of the workforce uh, in exports and 40% of internal marketing are only. This is one of the important features of the fishery uh, support to the farmers, and it contributes 1.4 percentage in India's GDP. Horticulture is an important aspect where diversification has taken place. It involves cultivation of fruits, vegetables, flowers, etc. India is the world leader in producing a variety of fruits like mango, banana, etc. And particularly, Maharashtra state is named for 
cultivation of uh, cultivation of fruits it is a center of fruits i think one of the major state uh, which is producing uh, horticulture crop and export of fruits and vegetables it generates employment for 19% of the india's total labor force so from this we can understand how diversification has helps and what uh, what type of the diversification is occurring in the rural economy so some important features we are coming across here are you getting my voice sir avaz ye to ka yes sir yes sir it's very clear a little no, bit slower but clear okay 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 uh major features of diversification multiple or mixed cropping system is very important which is not observed to a large extent since i belong to a rural area i am observing a continuous type of uh, crop a traditional type of cropping pattern and a traditional type of marketing is still observed but for a long period of time this was happening and nowadays some experiments are going on and those are in the forms of such type of changes and those are very important but it, it is necessary that it should be the uh, the diversification of these changes should be widened a lot uh, there is shift from sole agricultural activities to other allied enterprises like fishery forest products poultry and other non agricultural sector also Uh, in the western maharashtra we uh, we have so many uh, such type of small units and cooperative sugar factories poultry units cooperative poultry uh, poultry units uh, milk unions and in the states like uh, gujarat we have a big example of anand that is uh, amul that is anand milk union limited so this uh, this type of initiation taken by the cooperative sector helps uh, farmers community a lot so by every means diversification in agricultural activities proves to be extremely beneficial for small farmers to increase their income so uh, why rural people diversify what is the necessity what are the factors responsible for this uh, such type of changes that's diversification there are some push push drivers and pull drivers in case of pull drivers just see poverty is one of the important future constraints of agricultural environment high pressure on land and natural resources instable economic market and institutional environment high pressure of population is a common in case of agricultural sector there are some activities which are very seasonal in nature so youths of the rural they, they will not get the employment throughout the year so they want to uh, migrate from a particular particular village to the big cities like pune mumbai or uh, other cities again they uh, they remigrate to their native places so such type of uh, situations and the negative perceptions of agricultural activities because the income is not sure the climatic conditions are not sure and these are the push drivers uh, which uh, which leads to migration and sometimes this force this is what a positively we can take this positively that new job opportunities are there training of the rural youths is going on new demand and supply supply factors is arising and such type of improved connections and access is helping a lot and increasing risk facing increasing needs related to education health living conditions agricultural potential and distance may interact in determining the locational advantage occupational choices and resources to non farm economic activities 
it is a core aspect of rural diversification when people are involving in the non farm activities automatically their income and income increases and the diversify diversification helps them a lot these are the reasons for agricultural diversification diversification reasonably controls the damage that can occur from the unfavorable weather conditions because climatic conditions uh, farmers are not sure about the climatic conditions sometimes there is a flood and the crop loss is uh, loss uh, occurs due to the such type of uh, due to uh, flood situations and sometimes there is a drought condition such type of climatic changes affects the farmers income so this process setbacks the, uh, the process of um, diversification setbacks them from the loss of crops under such circumstances then it facilitates several employment alternatives several employment alternatives come up from the diversification and we have observed also the in, in the form of uh, marketing commercialization of uh, uh, plant uh, crops then some new plantations of the crops so cropping change in the cropping pattern almost half of the employment in india in what uh, revolves around the agriculture sector so so that diversification creates a new job opportunities for uh, the rural people than the traditional farming so it increases their income diversification definitely helps increase in the income of the farmers then exportations diversification helps for increase in the exports and to come up with some examples of rural diversification strong regional and franchise effects and even opportunities importance of non farm activities they have come up with importance of the uh, non farm activities or on farm activities then agricultural wage labor a common off farm activity and mostly it is seasonal in nature but they get low returns from this non agricultural wage labor have some unique features they are limited sporadic mainly informal and poorly paid administration or uh, public administration or tourism they are placed into the public administration and tourism with very uh, low paid workers so diversification has these features in the rural area which needs to be changed then self employment the most common source of off farm income is self employment and it it has two important patterns coping strategies very low returns here also odd jobs are there full time activities better better assets investment then transfers mostly remittances and variable in importance of historical patterns of migration form of migration nature land and destination so when we uh, when we say that this rural diversification should bring the self employment the point to tell here is in case of self employment self employment should lead to increase in the income of the farmers increase in the uh, standard of living of the farmers but there is a very slow process that we observe in case of rural economy in case of transfers also these are mostly in terms of remittances and they are variable also then historical patterns of migration with low income they are transferring from one sector one area one region to another region rural to urban so that is not also helping a lot to the farmers and the form of migration depends upon the nature of migration so the what is the nature of migration what is the land what is the destination this the, these all factors are very important so as to consider diversification is helping a lot or whether there is a diversification in a positive way so this is income relation uh, this is relationship between diversification and income uh, household income and household diversification along the y axis we have shown household diversification and along the y axis Uh, this is the household income it takes in the inverted u pattern no diversification centered 
subsistence farming then we adopt the diversification strategies and increasing returns and risk reduction takes place then households begin to specialize and when they are succeeded in specialize uh, specializing uh, specializing the thing full specialization in agriculture or other activity takes place it may be a farm activity or non farm activity in this way household act, household income will increase with the with this situation of the migration uh, situation of uh, i mean diversification or changes in the rural economy so some important strategies are uh, definitely are there for rural development i mean the diversification so these strategies includes still there there is a uh, problem of poverty and vast poverty in a rural area so poverty alleviation is one of the important uh, important is a strategy strategy uh, for uplifting the farmers for higher level of income better livelihood opportunities provision of basic amenities and infrastructure facilities for these changes so innovative programs should be there wage and self employment facilities should be there and one of the important factor is integrated rural development is invited at the same time a goal and a methodological approach should be there the goal is to include the neglected masses of rural poor rural poor in the process of increasing the well being of the mankind the approach for reaching this goal is the application of a bundle of well planned measures of economic and uh, political uh, nature some important aspects which are related to the migrations are natural resources agricultural and non agricultural the utilization of natural resources is one of the important form of diversification change in the approach of the human resources pattern of social organization economic structure the traditional structure is changing nowadays and it is it is a, a type of structure uh, which is considering a farmer farming community to engage in the non farm activity the technology in agriculture in the non agricultural sector is very important infrastructure is fully uh, should be fully expanded institutions and organizations they are supporting supporting for the rural community is important and some important uh, services and education and training these are the important factors so come to the benefits of the diversification when uh, when the changes takes place in the rural community that will lead to a very important uh, thing which is a need of the day for the rural sector that is to reduce the risk from the agricultural sector so many risks uh, risks are there and that should be reduced to a lower lower maximum extent then providing additional employment opportunities this is this is also an important uh, benefit higher level of income it leads to lead to higher level of income of the rural sector rural community and helping in overcoming the extreme poverty it helps in reducing the risk factors this is this is what the explanation of uh, the earlier because of the time constraint i am not uh, going through the detail uh, multiple crops can be harvested the agriculture is already crowded that crowd should be reduced crop diversification is important and to boost the rural employment impacts the overall economy of the nation as agriculture in india falls in the primary sector of the country rural peoples who still largely depend on agriculture in most of the developing uh, world increasingly uh, drive incomes from the non farm activities there is intensification of rural diversification and which is very important uh, for uh, for the uh, for the farmers to have a large body of literature has uh, Also, it is also related to the investigated the extent nature and drivers of the rural diversity. What type of uh, uh, what type of diversification is uh, important? And there are some certain studies also in what way we have to uh, we have to go for the rural diversification. That is in the form of rural employment. 
concentration on the rural employment uh, rural employment is very important this is the major problem because of this fact so many so many packages so many uh, so many committees have been formed so many programs have been initiated by the government of india for the for increasing the rural employment for helping the for helping to diversify the rural sector and a positive way, way of thinking for uh, the irrigational facilities providing the irrigational facilities so uh, from providing seeds to uh, irrigational facilities to the marketing facilities a chain of a chain of the things requires which will uh, which will helps to the farmers and it this includes infrastructural facilities and other related facilities which will increase the rural income there should be optimum use of resources which is not observed optimum use of resources requires a systematic uh, crop uh, planning crop management scientific crop management and for that purpose a lot of things to be needed and there are lot of opportunities also so many farm techniques have been developed in, in, in these day farm techniques uh, techniques in the sense we can apply the technology to a small land holdings also earlier which was not possible so there are definitely an opportunities which are there for increasing the productivity or productivity of the agriculture also cropping pattern will definitely increase with the help of with the help of new technology with the help of new management system with the help of new cropping pattern system uh, which is initiated by the government in a many ways increase non farm non farm activity the, this should be this should be done by way of changing the outlook of the farmers in what way they should transfer from agriculture to other sector what type of non farm activity they have to, they, are, they have to take how that will be benefited in what, what will be the structure what will be the planning and what will be the ways of implementing these strategies are uh, have been adopted by many of them but still it is necessary that 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 should be a structured and in a formal way then to reduce the poverty this is one of the important challenges also then infrastructural development there are opportunities as well as challenges also in, uh, with related to providing the infrastructure facilities still from road to all other facilities which are related to marketing credit and uh, the education social uh, social educational uh, educational development etc improving the knowledge base that is what actually education is and needed strong base of education uh, should be there agricultural uh, agricultural related research and development which we helping the farming community for their day to day activities like interculture growing uh, development of certain new crops cultivation of certain new crops new crops etc then re engaging with development strategy adopting an integrated framework to support agriculture and rural diversification and that should be from uh, this support should be from local and territorial and it should be uh, it should be done in a dynamic way to sum up this uh, um, these things i have come across some important uh, points still to go this is one of the important structural change and rural uh, structural change and rural diversification in developing countries because this is an important aspect of uh, uh, rural diversification i will take still uh, 10 minutes are there so that i am going through this this concept which is very close to uh, rural diversification uh, that is what we expect the structural change in the developing countries what type of uh, suggestions and literature we observe that we are looking it's a process of change in the macro economic structure based in a shift from agriculture to industry and services 
so shifting from agriculture to industry and related services is an important aspect of rural diversification so underlying dynamic uh, situations are to, how to increase the productivity in agriculture what type of innovations we require so this structural change will definitely bring out the rural diversification the release of labor and capital to other economic activities it is big tough job to have to pull them from the agricultural sector and and to supply these labors or uh, creating an opportunities in the urban areas or other non farm sector uh, it, it, takes, it takes a long uh, long period also it is a slow process uh, i mean a broad geographic restructuring is required flow of labor from scattered to more concentrated activities uh, which are observed in case of urban uh, urban area and research will be higher income greater wealth and improving living conditions along with the medical progress demographic transition uh, the structural change in the form of demographic transition is required growing agricultural incomes that will lead to rural demand and opportunities for rural activities for the diversification so historical pathway of structural change has been takes place in the many areas particularly in the developing countries uh, historical this historical uh, pathway at different places is initiated in europe first you know with the industrial revolution this was uh, followed by Uh, European offshoots plus Japan well, until World War II. Then it was spread in the Latin America, South Korea, Eastern Europe, and the situation is more diverse in Asia and Africa. So the, here years are given: Brazil 1965, Morocco 1980, uh, like that. Korea 1965, Indonesia 1965. For developing countries, the diversification takes a uh, It takes long period. Mid developers, which includes most of South uh, Saharan African countries, simultaneously confronted with incipient economic transition, unachieved uh, demographic transition, growing urbanization without industrialization, and these are also concerned with our country. The moment in time matters in the context of global open economy, high international competition. then existing opportunities will definitely that is the benefits of technological progress and fast fast experience advantage of new opportunities to access global markets critical constraints are instability of the national environment then various pressures pressures are there in our natural environment degradation etc with the industrialization uh, we have certain Uh, things which come up with the development also and today's rural population growth is shown here population in many of the developing countries is not in a way of uh, it's not a controlled way that is what one of the important hurdle is there uh, rapid urbanization is mega cities is there but population remains rural and is still is still growing that is what the problem is there this red part of the uh, shows and in case of india also we are observing that we are not uh, still controlling the population particularly in the rural areas that is what the uh, the important hurdle for this type of change or uh, structural change and diversification what we need for uh, uh, diversification and for increasing the income of the farmers this migration massive but it is limited compared to past transitions not a viable options it is not a viable options so in case of uh, to go fast uh, uh, in case of growth and employment also we come across labor force is increasing is critical in most of the region of the developing country labor demand in uh, south saharan of the travel region 70 90 million this is the data given Uh, we, uh, we are not concerned with only we can understand the situation there uh, wherein we, we want to change we want to brought changes in the agricultural sector 
but certain situations are a hindrance for such things uh, regarding the growth of the employment in the agriculture today agriculture is still the main activity in rural areas and in most of the developing world but agriculture is one of one among the activities of the rural people diversification needed for in a positive uh, diversification which needed in a positive way to change this situation to uplift the labor force from to uplift the labor force from the rural uh, area to the non farming sector that is what actually expected so we should concentrate for the diversification to change in the structural format of the agricultural sector and and to diversify the existing situation and to develop a non farm activity that is what very uh, three these three important aspects of rural diversification is observed three out of uh, every four poor people in developing countries live in rural areas that that requires the changes second one is agriculture and other activities developed by rural peoples that is locally or in migration provide uh, and will continue to provide employment income and food to the many in most of the developing world and third one is development strategies cannot ignore rural transformation and in the interlink between rural and urban areas must address these new challenges supporting the existing dynamics in that way we require the diversification in the rural area and this diversification is very important uh, from human resource to the structural in uh, the structure and the formal sector mindset of the farmers they have to be trained they have to be uh, educated they should be a manager of the particular farm they should be an entrepreneur they should be an agripreneur and such type of changes when we brought together with the help of the government with the help of the farming community with the help of the other businessmen they, this integrated approach will definitely bring out the diversification in the rural economy and that will help to uplift the farmers to raise their income to raise their employment opportunities and to raise the standard of living of the um, rural community uh, i think with this i will remain here once again i am thankful to you sir for giving me this opportunity thank you very much it is almost 4 o'clock i think hello sir hello ha ha sir sir hello sir ha yeto hai aaj thank you okay thank you very much thank you sir uh, so i request all the participants uh, the the session is open now for the uh, question answers and the discussion please if you have any doubt any query then you can ask participants you are requested to ask the questions if any i think there is no question regarding this it's very clear to all 
Şimdi nasıl? Sir, uh, only uh, two minutes. Sir, with you. Hello, sir. Just, just Hi, me. sir. Ashendra, sir. Uh, it's the lecture is delivered, and so once again, I I will uh, instruct to the students. Yes, sir. Sir, one, I, sir? one thing is there. One question has arrived. Okay. So that I will answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is rural diversification uh, polluting the? Yeah, yeah. Regarding, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, regarding the benefits of the rural diversification, one student has asked how it is beneficial for the uh, society. Yes, two questions. Are, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so what happens? I am not going with all the details of this uh, uh, this particular uh, questions. Uh, there is there is one uh, slide of how what are the benefits of the society. So far as the society uh, is concerned, when a, a drastic change in the agricultural sector will takes place, that will help a lot to increase the income of the farming community. There will be um, uh, increase in the employment opportunities. Standard of living of the rural community will increase definitely. And when a sort of development takes place. That will help for the total society by way of some new products, uh, agro-related products. There will be there will be variety of uh, crops which will be grown within our country. That will benefit to all of us. It will come uh, it will come to us with uh, low price, with higher quality. That type of diversification we are uh, actually uh, expected, and that will be definitely beneficial for all of us. For increasing our standard of living, income, employment, when rural community go on developing, that will help a lot for the uh, the country like India, which is mostly relied on the agriculture sector. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Anyone else want to ask anything? One more question is there. Is rural diversification is polluting the nature? Are you getting, sir? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, this is a very important question, which is actually uh, related to uh, the development. Always, this comes for when we teach the growth and development of our country development theory. Uh, when development takes place, a kind of development, diversification is a kind of development, development of the rural economy. Diversification may be not only in the rural economy, 
Diversification is related to so many things, maybe social employment, and uh, it may it it may be related to the urban diversification, and whether the uh, whether it is polluting in nature. It's not polluting in nature. How we deal with deal with a particular uh, kind of development, a particular kind of change, in what way we are applying it. So that 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 matters, and it depends on. in what way we are cultivating the crops in what way we are growing the particular uh, particular plants i mean how we are using the seeds whether it is herbal or not that's the question and no doubt if a particular particular plantation is there and if it is not in a proper way if a development strategy is going only fresh uh, only on the development uh, for achieving the targets only and if we are neglecting the other impacts also so that will lead to definitely for uh, the pollution but all when we take all the care so uh, while approaching for a particular while uh, reaching the target of a particular maybe the diversification in the agriculture and other sectors there will not be the question of pollution thank you very much thank you sir thank you for your uh, deep and insightful uh, lecture on rural diversity diversification uh, you have uh, cleared all the doubts of the students also so thank you very much sir and uh, just if any any question uh, anyone wants to ask anything then again they can they are free to ask sir will attend all the questions yes sir yeah of course okay sir we are again all question and okay sir uh, i think uh, there is no more question so so uh, for the participants two instructions as i uh, told you first you have to fill the daily attendance and uh, the link in in two minutes i will uh, provide you that link but don't leave don't leave uh, before filling the second link because the second link will be very important and that will uh, give you the e certificate so uh, just by filling one don't leave the group don't leave the meeting so as a uh, uh, formal formality and i uh, request Doctor, uh, Professor Rupali Devlekar, Madam, to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you, Doctor Gore, sir. Uh, eight minutes. Just, minute. just, just, just a minute. Uh, we are uh, now at the end of our uh, one-week lecture series of the expert. Uh, we have tried our level best. to invite the resource person from the various field and just it is a formality of validity function of one week lecture series uh, dear student we have tried our best to add something in your knowledge and uh, many of the student they were very much punctuate regarding their attendance and uh, sincerely you listen the entire lecture series uh today is the last lecture of dr chavan sir earlier there was gardesh sir uh, marina madam dr shahpuri sir and so many expert we have invited and they have tried to gain you something 
so in future also we will try our level best to organize a different programs on the behalf of our department of economics so if you are there in the group of one week lecture series you don't leave the group because as and when we are getting something new for you that we will post in that group not only related to the academic program but also there might be vocational or professional development activities that will be posted in the group so as a head department of economics of pragati college i thanks to this all resource person and specially uh, to all the participants who are attending this lecture regularly so wish you all the best for your future and thank you everyone over to you madam thank you thank you sir a very good afternoon to all of you uh, today we are at the end of one week intercollegiate lecture series on this occasion we have our head department of economics dr avinash chandra sir also the resource person of today's lecture series dr kashina savan sir hod economics and, and vice principal new education societies arts commerce and science college lanza district ratnagiri first of all i would like to thanks dr kashina savan sir for accepting our invitation of this lecture series and his valuable time sparing with our student sir we are very much sure because of your lecture the entire student will be benefited immensely i hope to have many more such enlightening interaction with you in the future also i thanks to the principal of the college dr jyoti pohani madam for her support for this one week lecture series i also thanks to our head of the department dr chandra sir for his innovative idea with respect to this lecture series i thanks to my departmental colleague dr gore sir for his efforts in making this lecture series a very grand success not least not least but i am very much thankful uh, to all my dear student participant from the various colleges affiliated to university of mumbai for their participation in a large number also thankful to their because you are attending this lecture series since last 6 days you are attending this lecture on time your punctuality was so excellent so once again i am thank to you from my bottom of heart i also thank uh, to the teaching and non teaching staff of the college for their directly and indirectly support in making this lecture series a very grand success thank you so much everyone over to you gore sir savan sir hello sir very nice hello, sir. Thank i am you. very happy to see uh that uh, your presentation it was so excellent you have covered all the aspect related to rural diversification and it was our one efforts in future also we required your cooperation thank you very much sir and i congratulate all uh, uh, your faculty and yourself for taking so much pain and uh, the wonderful uh, series you have organized and that will be helpful for us also We have such uh, series and invite you uh, once again. Sure. I congratulate all the faculty members from Department of Economics because such type of response it is a credit of you all. Uh, students have joined, so many students have joined, and I was very happy to talk with them. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you once again. Thank you, sir. So. the first link is given daily attendance link is given students please fill the first link attendance link and then uh, secondly i will provide you the uh, certificate link okay i, I will re resend it uh, but uh, it's once again it's only the 
attendance link attendance link so wait for the certificate link those who have not filled the attendance they please fill it first and then i will provide you the certificate link 